Hello, and welcome to this episode of The Security Angle. I'm your host, Shelley Kramer, Managing Director and Principal Analyst here at theCUBE Research. I'm joined today by my co-host, Joe Peterson, fellow analyst, engineer, member of the CUBE Collective community, and all around brilliant human being. And our guest today is Rob May. Rob is the founder and the executive chairman of Ramsack. Rob, welcome, we're glad to have you. Thank you, it's a pleasure to be here. And and you know what? Cutting into your evening. So we appreciate you spending time with us. So in this episode today, we're going to dive into all things Microsoft Copilot for security. This went GA about six weeks ago on April 1st, and we want to unpack some of the nuances of this platform and uh, just kind of uh, pick Rob's brain a little bit on that topic. So some more backstory, Microsoft Copilot for security. It's a chat GPT gen AI powered chatbot. It uses natural language inputs to deliver insights and help guide an IT team and IT team's next steps. It integrates with Microsoft's other cybersecurity products and platforms, including uh, Microsoft Defender XDR, Microsoft Sentinel, Microsoft Intune, Microsoft Defender Threat Intelligence, Purview, and Defender Attack Service. Microsoft Copilot for Security can access data from all of these products, and it can provide a Copilot-driven experience, which is designed to help increase, to do what everybody wants, <laughs> increase efficiency and effectiveness. So this is built on the tech giant's existing threat intelligence gathering, and, it, and it's really designed to provide IT pros with access to the latest information on security threats. And, and it also benefits from the 78 trillion daily signals that Microsoft already collects across its ecosystem. So pretty powerful. Um, Cybersecurity has been a growing business for Microsoft for some time and accounted for about 20 billion in revenue for the company in fiscal year 2022, greater than gaming or search advertising, although search advertising, Microsoft, I don't know. Um, and the new AI powered solution could of course become a massive business opportunity and that's part of what we're going to explore here could present a serious challenge to other players in this space. And that's what we wanted to dive into today. So, our guest, Rob May. Rob's a technologist, a thought leader, and an author. Um, he's the founder and the executive chair at Ramsack. He's written several books on cybersecurity and on AI. And so we thought he would be the perfect person for this conversation. Rob is also a UK ambassador for cybersecurity, and he's been a tech industry spokesperson for the past 30 years. So he knows what he's talking about. Welcome to the show, Rob. We're glad to have you. Thank you. It's a, it is an absolute pleasure to be with you this evening. Well, we are glad. So uh, I warned you about this in advance. One of my favorite parts of this show is asking our guests to share a little bit of your career backstory and maybe something about yourself that we might not know. Share your, tell us your secrets, Rob. <laughs> so <laughs> I've, I've been running Ramsack for 33 years now, uh, since I was six, obviously. And uh, <laughs> it, it, it's been most it's been most of my career. I I, I started off life uh, with a yeah, in software actually, and that that organisation was acquired by a division of IBM, and I, I went into that world and then realised that actually huge corporate wasn't the life for me. Mm -hmm. and, there was a better way of doing things, so uh, so I launched I launched Ramsag way before cybersecurity was really a thing that I was aware of, and uh, we started life as a a technology business, a, a networking and infrastructure business, and have been to the various versions of digital transformation through through cloud and uh, yeah, well uh, the. The World Wide Web was launched the year after I started the business, which is... Uh... <laughs> you know what? I'm just going to tell you that I think we're all sort of in the same age group. So we know what those days were like, Rob. <laughs> Indeed. We know what those days were like. So Ramsack, where does the name come from? So originally, so so now we have this acronym that it, that it stands for. But the, the truth of the matter is 
that originally it was based on my initials and my co-founder initials. So Rob May and Sally Cooper was where it first first came from. And Sally's still uh, a founding director and still involved in the, very much involved in the organization with me. Got it. Got it. You know, clever naming. All right. You have any other secrets you want to unload on us before we dive in? Yeah. Because no, we're I here for it. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> okay. All right. So here we go. Microsoft is obviously not the first company to put AI to work in cybersecurity. We've got CrowdStrikes and Charlotte AI, which is a Gen AI security tool that can process over 2 trillion events a day, making 100 million, 180 million indications of attack decisions every second. Zscaler just acquired AI security startup Avalor to boost rate zone AI-driven predictions. Sentinel One and Cloudflare have both developed AI enhanced protections. And of course, this there was no shortage of discussion about these solutions last week at RSA in San Francisco. So let's center in on Microsoft. What do you think about Microsoft tech here in this offering as it relates to other security vendors? I want to know whether you think it's better or just the fact that Microsoft has this, you know, massive footprint inside the enterprise that might be, that might account for quick adoption or, or, or is it a little bit of both? Is it, you know, an amazing product that's better than others on the market and this infiltration throughout the enterprise? What do you think? Mm, I, I think it probably is a bit of both. Okay. Microsoft's boat pilot has the advantage of being deeply integrated with other existing enterprise ecosystems like Azure and Office 365. Right. And that that existing connection makes it easier for organizations to adopt Copilot for security right. without disrupting any current workflow. So so what sets Microsoft apart is not not just its advanced technology, but its strong presence in in the enterprise se sector. And I think Microsoft's AI solution is powerful and it, and it's supported by its partnership with OpenAI, which gives Copilot for security access to huge data sources and sophisticated machine learning models. Right. And businesses that already use Microsoft's products can really easily incorporate Copilot for security, leading to, I think, faster adoption than the rivals like Zscaler and CrowdStrike, who who almost certainly don't have the same level of integration within most enterprises. Right. So I think I think Microsoft's success is a result of both how good the tech is, but also that strategic market positioning. Got it. Well, and I, I, I really ask this because, you know, we have lots of conversations uh, about Microsoft Teams, which in many instances seems to be universally loathed as a communication collaboration platform. And, you know, people accept the fact that it's part of Office 365. It's part of this plat Microsoft platform. This is what we use and, you know, we don't have to like it. So that was really what drove my question. And, and it's probably early enough days that we don't really know, you know? I mean, I know the product has been a beta for the last year. I know it's been GA for about six weeks, but um, Perhaps maybe there needs to be a little time before we can really evaluate it against other vendors. What do you think about that? Yes, possibly. Um, I, I think the thing is what we're seeing with everything that Microsoft are doing with Copilot or Copilots, and I think that's that's another topic as well because there's there's just so many Copilots. Right. But everything that they're doing, they've got such deep pockets and they've yeah. got such huge compute power. Right. That they're they're just making huge huge strides, and uh, to an extent, I think they're hard to compete with at the moment. Yeah, well, I mean, those are incredibly valid points. I think it was Sam Altman who said, um, and maybe it was a Twitter post, X post, um, uh, probably within the last month or so. But he made a comment about you know when developers are job hunting these days. Um, and somebody approaches them, the first question they ask is, how many GPUs do you have? Right. <laughs> yeah, that's great. And, that's you great. know, I mean, because if you don't have what it is they need to be able to do what it is they want to do, 
they're not saying yes. Yeah. Sure. That's funny. It's, yeah. uh, you know, security guys that are looking at jobs that that way too. Yeah. Right. They, yeah. they do. They, they, Hey, show me your tool stack. Yeah. And that lets them know whether or not they want to kind of adios out of there. Yeah. Um, so Shelly, you're right. It's only been GA for about six weeks and Rob in reading about it, and I haven't tried it out yet, but in reading about it, it can work as a standalone application that draws data from different sources or as an embedded chat window within other Microsoft security services. So can you take us through that, those two scenarios and why that distinction might matter to somebody? Sure. So as a standalone application, um, as he said, Copilot for security draws data from multiple sources and not just limited to Microsoft's ecosystem. And that versatility allows businesses to integrate various security feeds, enhancing threat detection and response capabilities. And users therefore benefit from a consolidated view of security insights, the so-called single pane of glass, making it easier to manage diverse environments. Whilst as an embedded application within other Microsoft security services, such as Microsoft Defender or Sentinel, uh, Copilot for Security provides both seamless integration, but also a unified interface. And that setup leverages existing Microsoft infrastructure, streamlines workflows, enhances productivity, and so on, all the stuff that we're expecting from from Copilot, and users can interact with with Copilot for security directly within familiar tools, facilitating quick access to insights and 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 security recommendations. And this is this is the key thing for security uh, professionals without needing to switch environments. So, I think the way that they've positioned this, organisations can choose the deployment method that best fits their infrastructure and their needs. Standalone deployments, ideal for mixed environments and multiple security tools. An embedded deployment suits those who are already really committed to Microsoft's ecosystem. And that that dual deployment, I think, makes it, it really appealing. It provides comprehensive, adaptable solutions that fit what we know to be the many varied uh, enterprise security needs. Right, kind of meeting meeting users where they are. Yeah. You know, that's kind of what. So, you know, I was reading an article in Tech Radar about this, and one of the comments that they made was that this platform was decidedly not a doer. And what that means is, and, and this is for the benefit of people who haven't played with it yet. I know, you, Joe, you mentioned that you haven't, I haven't either. Um, but it means that it won't take actions on its own. Uh, it will, uh, like, you know, block emails, it won't delete suspicious files, but it will suggest and guide and explain to folks using the platform, um, you know, suggested actions. And then it's, and it's also prompt based. So when I see that, I, I feel like there's also a need here for users to kind of up their query games um, because that's not always an intuitive thing that we just, you know, know how to do. So you guys think that probably is a valid observation? Yeah, I, th I think, I mean, you're absolutely right. This is, and again, if you if you look at the way Microsoft position their co-pilot, uh, one of the sort of the underlying messages is this AI, whichever co-pilot it is, and that that's confusing because there are so literally so many. But whichever <laughs> co-pilot it is, it is a co-pilot. It's not an autopilot. Yes, and. And what that means is there always needs to be that 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 human in the loop. The co-pilot yeah. is augmenting what the what the security operative is doing in this instance. Yeah, yeah, no, that makes sense. And but I think that to me, it's important as we evaluate and compare solutions that you know we're doing apples to apples, right? And so this is not a platform that's going to do it for you, but it will suggest and guide you. And again, I do think that that, you know, that that query muscle that all of us 
should probably be developing is an important part of this success with this platform. Well, yeah, I, I think you're right. And I think with any AI, you know, the the first part of implementation for me of any of any AI is making sure that staff know how how to prompt, you know, that they know how to talk to the AI tools. Because if you if you talk to an AI tool in the same way that you would do a Google query, you're not going to get you're not going to get good results. So right. there is a there's definitely a, a training and an education piece at, at, at all levels within organizations. I think we just heard the name of your new book, Rob. Yeah. Pilot, not an autopilot. Yes. I like that. I like right? that. That's great. I like that. So let's talk pricing for a minute. Um, you know, for Microsoft Security Copilot, there Microsoft's just adopting a subscription-based pricing model. It's usage-based and it's broken down into security compute units or SCUs, and and customers will be billed monthly for the number of SAUs SCUs provisioned hourly. And the rate is four dollars an hour, and there's a minimum of an hour use and and I think this is kind of interesting. Um, Microsoft is framing this as a, you know, a way to allow users to start experimenting with uh, with Copilot for security and then scale up as needed. What do you think? Do you two think that customers will um, be inspired by this, you know, relatively inexpensive pricing to kind of dive in and experiment? Um, or do you think there's a danger of, you know, I, I'll never forget what. <laughs> I'll never forget one time I was boosting um, years ago. I was boosting a post on LinkedIn, and I, I kind of set I set some pricing and some time frame, and I made a mistake, and I ended up being billed like you know something stupid like five hundred dollars because I just forgot, you know. So my question is, um, by the way, I never made that mistake ever again, uh, <laughs> ever, never. Um, but. But do you think that there's maybe an opportunity with this kind of pricing that it's a little bit unpredictable and that, you know, you could opt in and start using it and just have that holy crap moment like I did on LinkedIn? Do you think that's a, that, that's a you know, a danger or is this pricing model attractive and you think it'll be successful in sort of, sort of, you know, enticing people to try it out? I think for me, on the face of it, I think the experimentation play is good. You know, I think that I think that's a sensible idea. The the pricing model allows an organization to evaluate Copilot for security's capabilities without a significant upfront investment. And the, the pay as you go approach is particularly attractive to smaller organizations yeah. or anyone who's unsure about long term commitment as they can gauge the tools. Uh, effectiveness, work out a return on investment before scaling their adoption. On the flip side, some customers might view this pricing model as opaque and unpredictable. And as usage scales, costs can accumulate quickly, a bit like you just said with, with the, the LinkedIn. Um, <laughs> Bonehead moves. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, that ultimately, as as you know, leads to higher than expected bills. So users, users using this need to closely monitor their usage to avoid unexpected costs. And we can help to mitigate those concerns by configuring dashboards and configuring alerts for usage and, the, and so on. But, but we all know that not everyone will do that. And overall, I think... Overall, I think the usage-based pricing offers flexibility and scalability. You know, it allows organizations to experiment without those large upfront costs. However, the potential for those unpredicted expenses necessitates watchful usage monitoring. Crucially, I think we need clear communication. We need to configure the tools to track usage so that customers fully benefit from a model whilst maintaining cost control because if they don't and they get that really nasty large bill it's it's yeah it's it's, it's not never good. fun it's no. never fun but you know it sounds like putting the right i mean really i don't know that this is fundamentally any any different than any other conversation we have about you know putting the right the right permissions in place the right oversight in 
place, monitoring it, you know, not assuming that people 100% know what they're doing. I mean, I think all those things probably come into play here just like they do with anything else. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, the data is starting to unfold here and it's early. We've said that already, Rob, but one recent randomized trial revealed that experienced security analysts were 22% faster and 7% more accurate across tasks when assisted by co-pilot. So is this a vehicle that maybe a manager of, or a, a manager of a security team could use to upskill? And could this be a way, could this tool be a way to help that understaffed SMB um, bubble up some potential uh, decisions that they could make. Talk to us about that. Okay, so if if we look at the entire suite of co-pilots from Microsoft, each one is designed to be assistive and it's designed to augment an employee's role. So I'm not sure, I'm not sure I'd describe it as upskilling. Um, my view is security teams are using co-pilot for security to be more efficient and to be more productive by leveraging both its AI driven insights, but also its, its automation capabilities. And the tools assist in quickly identifying and responding to threats. So that will allow, um, you know, the operative at whatever level they're at in that security team to focus on strategic tasks rather than the routine analysis. What what this does really well is sift through mm -hmm. all of the data and all of all of the messages and all of the signals to actually filter out the stuff that people actually need to be looking at. So this support enhances their efficiency and their accuracy, enabling them to manage more complex issues more effectively. So in terms of upskilling, you know, it, it's an interesting one because in in some ways we what it what it does is it, it removes sort of the um the that triage stage and it, it gets straight to business in terms of okay well now now you deliver your value you you deliver your skills so I think for SMBs and mid market organizations it is a game changer as it is for anyone, I think, who faces security staffing challenges, whether that's due to the size of the organization and limited resources, or actually whether it's just the lack of availability of talent in the recruitment market, which is a big, which is a big problem in, in cyber. You know. So yeah. co pilot co pilot for cybersecurity's AI capabilities, there's no question that it helps plug the gap by providing that expert level support making it making it easier to manage and to respond to threats with smaller teams for sure and it makes advanced security tools more accessible and that's going to allow organizations to get better level of security they're going to get a faster response more accuracy as well i think in in threat detections and detecting what are real threats and in responding to those without needing to massively upscale the size of, of those security teams. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, as I was uh, doing some research on this topic, I, I found some data that Microsoft shared that there are, and, and let, me, let me step back and say, for those of us who live and breathe in this space, what I'm going to say is not surprising in any way, but I think that for ordinary average businesses, companies, small to mid-market, and, and even larger companies, um, what we can't see, we're not thinking about, okay? I mean, I think that's a, a reality. But Microsoft's research indicates there are 4,000 password attacks per second and 300 unique nation-state crime actors diligently working, trying to make inroads. Microsoft says it takes 72 minutes from the time somebody clicks on a phishing link for an attacker to gain full access to data. So when we talk about solutions like 
um, Microsoft Copilot for security and the impact on the small to mid market. I think to me, this is where it's incredibly beneficial. It can be incredibly beneficial. Um, and to your point, Rob, um, Microsoft shared also, you know, they've been beta testing this for uh, over the course of the last year. Their users in the beta test have reported that um, Microsoft Copilot for security helped them be 26% faster, 34% more accurate in th threat assessments. And they also claim that their system is about 46% more accurate when it comes to security summarization and incident analysis mm -hmm. compared to when users aren't using it. So I think those are all really attractive parts of the Microsoft Copilot for security value prop. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, th I think that's the thing actually with, with all of these AI assistants at the moment, um, whether all the numbers line up across all the platforms, but it, it's all about those increases in, yeah. in productivity and accuracy yes. and, and removing the dull parts of, of, of people's jobs, you know, let let people deliver where they add most value, and and yeah. typically that's not doing admin. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I've got a lot of dealt parts. I am offloading, <laughs> and I like it a lot. So as we prepare to wrap, will you walk us through what you see ahead? Um, do you see Microsoft Copilot for security integrations and and what do you see happening in the overall ecosystem for the product unfolding, I don't know, over the course of the next year? Okay. Um, I think we'll see Microsoft's Copilot for security with deeper integrations, both yeah. within the Microsoft ecosystem and also within third-party security tools. It will be integral within Sentinel and Defender and Azure Security Center and, right. and so on. And that will all provide a better user experience and streamline security operations. I think partnerships with other cybersecurity platforms too could expand its data sources. So enhancing that threat intelligence and, and detection capabilities. And it'll be interesting to see what, what joint ventures and partnerships happen there. Yeah. I think we can also expect significant advancements in both its AI and its automation features. You know, Copilot for Security's AI will will become more sophisticated. It will offer improved threat analysis, real-time incident response, and and those suggested uh, actions. Yeah. Actions, yeah, as well as automated remediation. We'll, we'll see that too. Um, and those enhancements will further reduce that manual workload that we were just talking about on, on right. security teams, allowing them to focus more on the strategic tasks and addressing the human in the loop needs of, yeah. of, of cyber response. I think the overall ecosystem will expand and that could include new APIs for easier integration with other tools and platforms, and that will pr promote a more collaborative and comprehensive cybersecurity environment. And we'll see regular updates and new features. You know, this world is changing so fast. Right. Every, every single, I'm, I'm doing a lot of talks on AI right now. And I have to, it's like chunks of my talks every week have to be rewritten because it, it's just changing so quickly. Right. Um, and then I, I think finally what will emerge that we haven't got yet because it's still such early days uh, whilst we've been playing with this for, for 12 months or so, it, it, it did only come out um, in April. So yeah. I think over time, over the next 12 months, as you asked, I think we'll, we'll see a more robust community, support community emerge around the solution. Mm -hmm. So. That will include training and user forums and expert yep. consultations and so on. And that will help maximize the tool's potential. Yeah, um, absolutely. So good things ahead. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Joe, is there any burning question that remains in your mind that we need to lob Rob's way? Well, not burning question, but we're seeing, uh, you know, to Rob's point, there was a, an announcement dropped yesterday about couple dance partners that I wouldn't have expected in the SEM space, right? So we're seeing these 
maybe uh, couplings evolve that seems to be getting more interesting um, as each of these sort of juggernaut security players look to get more wallet share. See? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Rob May, founder and executive chair of Ramsack, thank you so much for making time this evening to spend with Joe and me and talk about Microsoft Copilot for Security. I knew it was going to be a great conversation. You did not disappoint. And we are going to have to schedule another one of these to dive a little bit deeper, aren't we? Yeah, no, I'd love, love to do that. And uh, this session has been an absolute pleasure. And there's my dog saying goodbye to me too. <laughs> All right, you two. With that, we're going to wrap our show to our listening audience. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and we'll see you here next week.